Today, we're diving into the 1959 movie, Imitation of Life. Stick around because we've got some funny, shocking, and sad facts to share throughout this video. Which role did you enjoy the most? And who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this film? Imitation of Life is a powerful drama that explores themes of race, identity, and family dynamics. Directed by Douglas Sirk, it follows the story of two women from different backgrounds who form an unlikely bond as they navigate the challenges of life in 1950s America. With its compelling storyline and standout performances, it's no wonder this movie has stood the test of time. But beyond the screen, there are fascinating behind-the-scenes tidbits and historical context that add depth to the viewing experience. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from you. Keep watching for more interesting insights into this timeless classic. In the lively late 1950s, a movie emerged that gripped audiences and stayed relevant for generations. Imitation of Life wasn't just any film. It became a cultural phenomenon, addressing significant social issues with grace. Imagine the scene in 1959 as theaters across the country lit up with the story of two women from very different backgrounds. One, a white widow named Laura Meredith struggled to balance career ambitions with the challenges of single motherhood. The other, Annie Johnson, her African-American housekeeper, faced her own struggles raising Sarah Jane, her light-skinned daughter who wanted to pass as white in a society marked by racial prejudices. Directed by Douglas Sirk, Imitation of Life wasn't a typical Hollywood melodrama. It was a heartfelt exploration of race, identity, and the complexities of relationships in post-war America. The film dove deep into societal taboos, shedding light on issues often brushed aside or ignored. At its core, the movie was more than just a film. It was a reflection of the era's turbulent social landscape. It ignited conversations about race, privilege, and the ongoing quest for acceptance and belonging. Its influence was clear, challenging audiences to confront uncomfortable truths and reconsider perspectives on race and identity. Decades have passed, but Imitation of Life remains a classic, its themes still relevant in today's ever-changing world. Its lasting significance shows the power of storytelling to provoke thought, evoke emotion, and inspire change. Douglas Sirk, the director of this cinematic adaptation, delved into Fanny Hearst's novel before helming the project. Interestingly, he refrained from watching the 1934 version, which adhered more closely to the novel's narrative compared to his remake. Criticism surrounded the casting of Susan Conner, with the focus primarily on racial considerations. The selection stirred controversy and discussions about representation within the film. Sandra Dee, an integral part of the cast, had her biography featured in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives from 23-2005, shedding light on her life and career during that period. These aspects provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics, from Cirque's approach to source material to the controversial casting choices and the notable presence of Sandra Dee in the ensemble. In an interview with Hedda Hopper, Lana Turner found herself in the company of her future husband, Lex Barker. A sizable vase of flowers obstructed Lana's view of Lex. Unfazed, she rose from her seat, crossed the room, and removed the floral barrier, quipping, he's brand new, and I want to look at him. The book Golden Girls of MGM by Jane Ellen Wayne unveils a peculiar incident in Lana Turner's career. The glue used to affix false eyebrows for an Asian appearance led to the loss of her own eyebrows, a noteworthy sacrifice for a desired on-screen effect. While the casting decisions for films often take unexpected turns, Natalie Wood was initially considered for the role that eventually went to Susan Conner in the movie. This glimpse into the casting process showcases the dynamic nature of decision-making in the film industry. These anecdotes surrounding Lana Turner and the casting choices for key roles offer a glimpse into the intriguing behind-the-scenes aspects of the cinematic world. In the 1959 movie, Lana Turner portrayed a character alongside Troy Donahue. Donahue's parents, Edith and Merle Johnson SR, had diverse backgrounds. Edith hailed from New York, born to Swedish parents, while Merle was from Illinois with an English father and a German-American mother. Lana Turner's marital history is as varied as her on-screen roles. She never had a marriage lasting more than five years. Her longest union was with Henry Topping, lasting four years, seven months, and 14 days. Conversely, her briefest marriage, annulled after six months and 18 days, was to Stephen Crane, whom she remarried 38 days later. Another short-lived marriage was to Artie Shaw, lasting just one day shy of seven months. 
Apart from her romantic entanglements, Lana Turner had a passion for footwear, amassing an impressive collection of 698 pairs of shoes at one point in her life. This background adds depth to the actors involved in the film, providing insights into their personal lives that may inform their performances. Understanding these aspects can enrich viewers' appreciation of the characters portrayed on screen. In the 1959 film, several intriguing anecdotes about the cast and crew come to light. Sandra D, along with Carol Lindley and Tuesday Weld, attended a professional children's school in New York. They were all child models who frequently graced the pages of the American Girl magazine. Additionally, Lana Turner, who starred in the movie, faced three heartbreaking stillbirths in her lifetime due to the RH factor. It's worth noting that Universal Studios borrowed costume designer Jean Louis from Columbia Pictures for the production, a decision that greatly influenced the film's visual aesthetic. Amidst the glamour of Hollywood, behind the scenes of imitation of life, there were tales of perseverance, tragedy, and collaboration that added layers of depth to the film's narrative. These behind-the-scenes stories offer a glimpse into the lives of those who brought this cinematic masterpiece to fruition. Lana Turner, known for her role in a movie focusing on the struggles of mothers and daughters, was honored in 2012 by being inducted into the Hair Fans Hall of Fame. This film, though not directly involving her daughter Cheryl Crane, played a pivotal role in Turner's career comeback following a scandal involving Crane. In 1958, Crane fatally stabbed Turner's abusive boyfriend, leading to a publicized trial and media frenzy. Despite the turmoil, Turner poured her emotions into the 1959 film, resulting in both financial success and critical acclaim. Meanwhile, Troy Donahue, another actor associated with the film, was considered for a role in an all-male remake of a classic movie. Although the project never materialized, it showcased Donahue's potential in the industry. Turner's dedication to her craft and resilience in the face of personal challenges solidified her status as a Hollywood icon. In a notable departure from the 1934 version, the 1959 film Imitation of Life includes a scene where Annie discovers her daughter Sarah Jane performing in a nightclub. Interestingly, this scene bears resemblance to a similar moment in the classic women's film Mildred Pierce from 1945, suggesting possible inspiration. Troy Donahue, a familiar face on Ruth Lyons' The 5050 Club, gained a devoted fan in Ruth's teenage daughter Candy Laird Newman. As a surprise arranged by Troy, Candy was given a walk-on part in Palm Springs Weekend, announced on Ruth's show. Despite her brief appearance, it marked a significant moment for Candy, who tragically passed away at the age of 20 from cancer in the early 1960s. Later in his life, Troy Donahue took part in a production of Bye Bye Birdie, showcasing his involvement in the world of theater towards the end of his career. Troy's connection with Candy and his theatrical endeavors add layers to his career beyond the silver screen, demonstrating the diverse experiences of those involved in imitation of life.